What's going on, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Hockey on the Spot with Brandon Berenfeld. I'm Brandon Berenfeld. Thank you for joining. This is episode 35 of Hockey on the Spot. I hope everybody had an, a wonderful Labor Day. Um, I did not do a video yesterday because it was Labor Day. Um, and yeah, yesterday, basically the last day of summer vacation for most people. Um, school basically starting up again, and which means... The NHL rumor mill is also going to start back up again, in particular some of the free agent signings. And there are still some big names available coming into the end of summer, into the fall season, and going into training camp, which starts very soon. Um, there actually, But there actually were a couple of signings um, in the past couple of days after the Tamu Solani re-signing. Big contract extension earlier. Um, actually, yesterday on Labor Day, Corey Crawford inked a six-year contract extension with the Chicago Blackhawks as insurance that they will not lose him like they did Antti Niemi after they won the Stanley Cup in 2010. Um, and Crawford is basically their guy, the guy they want to go with long term, and he is excellent. He really is. He played excellent in the um, playoffs last year and really proved all the doubters wrong last year. After a really inconsistent year in 2011-2012, he really proved himself last year. And he earned his contract. He absolutely did. I, I like the signing a lot. And I like Corey Crawford, guy with a big chance to represent Team Canada at the 2014 Wim Winter Olympics in Sochi. Um, so, big signing there by the Blackhawks. And then there was another signing um, earlier today, the Pittsburgh Penguins signing Tom Kostopoulos over from the New Jersey Devils. Um, pretty similar type player to Matt D'Agostini, both of them coming over from the New Jersey Devils. Kostopoulos didn't play much last year. He was a late season signing by the Devils, um, but a solid defensive forward um, and a guy who will add some depth to a team that absolutely needs it. The Pittsburgh Penguins, although they have a great top six, not very depth heavy now with the losses of Tyler Kennedy and Matt Cook and with Pascal Dupuy moving up to top six duties once again. So um, <laughs> a good signing there by Pittsburgh. But yeah, we definitely have some big names still available on the board. And also we have a couple guys confirmed that will be attending some training camps this offseason. It has been confirmed that Guillaume La Tendresse, who played for the Ottawa Senators last year, will attend the training camp of the Phoenix Coyotes. Um, good bottom six guy, has the potential of a, of a second line winger, but the only problem with him is that he's always getting hurt. So um, that will be a big thing to watch for the Phoenix Coyotes. It was believed that he was going to go play in the KHL this year, but at least for right now, that is not the case. He will try for the Phoenix Coyotes, and maybe then, if that doesn't work, then maybe he'll go and play in the KHL. Um, also, veteran Radic Dvorak, who played for the Anaheim Ducks last season, will attend the training camp of the Carolina Hurricanes. Um, he could provide some leadership there. <laughs> Even though he didn't play a lot of games for the Anaheim Ducks last year, a late season signing, um, the games he did play, he actually played really well, especially against the Edmonton Oilers. And so, um, he was a guy who I kind of was surprised we didn't get to see at, at any of in the playoffs because of how well he played in the regular season when he did play. So, it is what it is, you know? Um, so, a good, I think it'll be a solid addition for the Carolina Hurricanes as they're another team that needs a little bit of depth with now what seems to be the retirement of Chad LaRose. Um, but in the meantime, there, there are still some very interesting free agent names up there as far as unrestricted free agents go. Brendan Morrow, Ron Hainsey, Damian Brunner, Brad Boys, Vinny Prospel, Ryan Whitney, Hal Gill, Jose Theodore, Milan Hayduk, Ilya Brzgalov, Tim Thomas. Um, and yeah, so those are big names up there still. Um, real big names, actually. Um, Mason Raymond's still up there as well. So these are all guys that could be treasures 
for different teams, and there are some teams that are have some cap available. And at one point, it was believed that Ron Hainsey was going to sign with the Carolina Hurricanes. That turned out to not be true, at least for right now. It was believed that Jose Theodore was going to sign with the Boston Bruins and be their backup goaltender. That's not going to happen, at least for right now. And then it was also believed, and this is still kind of on the debate right now, that Brendan Morrow was going to sign with either the Carolina Hurricanes or the Montreal Canadiens. I don't know if he'll necess I don't think he's going to sign with the Montreal Canadiens. However, like Radic Dvorak, he too will possibly be attending the Carolina Hurricanes training camp this year. And then you got Damian Brunner, who at one point was believed to be signing with the New Jersey Devils, and it looked like it was going to happen. It looked almost definite. Now we're not so sure. He could still sign with the Devils, but at one point he did start looking at going back to the Detroit Red Wings, and the Red Wings were interested in signing him, but he didn't want their offers, and so finally the Red Wings just kind of gave up on him, and he kind of gave up on them. So that kind of delayed the process, and it possibly even killed the process for the New Jersey Devils to sign him. And honestly, I think he would be a good addition for the Devils because they have some cap now with the new ownership. And, you know, the, again, now with the losses of Ilya Kovalchuk and David Clarkson, they need all the offense they can get. They actually need three lines of offense. Normally that may not be the best thing, but for the New Jersey Devils, it's something they need with the loss of Ilya Kovalchuk particularly. Then you got a guy like Brennan Morrow. I think he would be a great fit for the Carolina Hurricanes, just like Rag Dvorak. Adds a leadership there. Um, can um, is past the point in his career of being a top six forward, but still poses as a good third line depth player, maybe even the best in the league, arguably. Um, and the Canes, face it, they need that depth um, going forward if they're going to be helped out again with Chad LaRose gone. They lost a little bit of depth, and so they need to gain some back. Maybe Brendan Morrow could be the guy. I always saw Brendan Morrow as a good fit for a team like the Boston Bruins because they he definitely could fit their defensive physical system. Um, they also could use a winger, and then maybe a team like the Philadelphia Flyers. They're, they could use a left. They still need a third-line left winger. I don't know if they're going to be signing Simon Gagne back. Um, Simon Gagne is still on that list, too. Um, he's still a pretty solid name, name, great hands, and he could be a, have a comeback year if he manages to stay healthy. Um, <coughs> um, then you got a guy like Ron Hainsey, a veteran defenseman who hasn't had his best years in the past few years, but could still be a good depth defenseman on a shortened blue line. Um, maybe a team like the Anaheim Ducks, who, you know, lost Sheldon Sure. Let's face it, Mark Fistrick is not going to be the prototypical replacement, and who knows if he'll even play. I'm certain that they're going to lean more on a guy like Sammy Vatman to maybe get his shot at a full-time spot. Um, but you never know. You never know. Um, I don't think he'll sign with the Anaheim Ducks. I'm just saying he'd be good for them. Um, I'm not making predictions of who they're going to sign with. I'm just, you know, saying who they would be good with. Um, but uh, overall, I think maybe the Carolina Hurricanes, again, um, they're not that good on the blue line. They could use his quickness. Or a team like the Tampa Bay Lightning, who is very slow on the blue line. Hainsey is a little bit faster. He could add some speed on that blue line. Um, then Ryan Whitney, you know, he's had injury problems the past few years, has not been the same player since leaving the Pittsburgh Penguins. Um, though he does have that big shot from the point, um, he could be useful on a team that could use a power play quarterback, um, a team that doesn't have that big shot from the point. Um, maybe a team like, I don't know, the Florida Panthers. They could maybe use a guy like Ryan Whitney. They were the sixth best power play in the league last year, but they, to me, I don't think they really have a true power play quarterback. Um, they have Dmitry Kulikov, who has a big shot. When they lost Jason Garrison, they pretty much lost their big shot from the point. And Ryan Whitney could fill that. So I think it would be good for a team like the Florida Panthers. And then again, some of the other guys on there as well. Hal Gill, a big, big.
big defenseman, defensive defenseman. Um, he could be good for a team that needs a big blue liner. Um, I honestly think he could be good going back to the Montreal Canadiens. They are a team in desperate need of size, so maybe they he would be good for them. And he'll add some depth on that blue line if he does go back, which I don't think will happen, but um, it t maybe should happen. Or maybe a team like the Calgary Flames, who could use a veteran in their lineup, at least just for their rebuild, and help their youngsters develop. Again, I don't see the Calgary Flames going much of anywhere. But you never know. They could use some physicality back, a little more physicality back there, and a guy who's going to get down and block shots and do it with ease. Because of his big body, Hal Gill is just the type of player with that ability. Um, <laughs> Vinny Prospel, you know, he's not getting any younger, but could look for a short raise somewhere for a team that is also on the rebuild. Maybe a team like the Colorado Avalanche. They're a team rebuilding. Um, or maybe the Buffalo Sabres, they're also rebuilding. Um, they could use, one One of those two could use a guy like uh, Vinny Prospel. Um, then you got maybe a guy like Milan Hayduk, who is believed that would probably be retiring at the season's end, um, or before the season begins. He wants to go back to the Colorado Avalanche, but that's just not going to happen. Honestly, I always saw Milan Hayduk as a good fit, for a team like the Washington Capitals. I thought maybe the Caps would be a good team that could use his veteran skill, a guy who's won the Stanley Cup in this league, a former Rocket Richard winner. He's not the same player as he used to be, but he still poses as a solid top six guy, maybe even a good third line player. And I think the Washington Capitals could really benefit from a guy like Milan Hayduk. He brings some leadership to their lineup. <clears throat> Because if they don't have that leadership, which they haven't had um, ever really, it, it, they're just not going to get to the Stanley Cup Finals where they want to be. Um, again, Jose Theodore, a good backup option. I still think the Boston Bruins would be the right place for him. He's not going to get a big contract. We know that. And wherever he goes, he's going to be a backup goalie. Um, so I'm hoping the Bruins do keep that option open. Or maybe a team like the Columbus Blue Jackets, I could maybe see also. They don't really have a true backup goalie right now. Um, they they have, they're basically have Curtis McElhaney as their backup goalie. And let's face it, he's okay. He's not a true backup goalie. Maybe they could use a guy like Jose Theodore. Um, and then we got Ilya Brzgalov, who, you know, was bought out by the Philadelphia Flyers. He was bought out of that lengthy contract. He could be a, if he can get his, himself back up in shape, he could be a solid goaltender, you know, for any team. Honestly, I think the team that could probably use him the most, at least for, for, to give him a shot, would have to be the Tampa Bay Lightning. Honestly, they may have the goal, tallest goaltending duo in the league in Anders Lindback and Ben Bishop, and Ilya Brzgalov's not taller than either of those two. He's actually shorter than both of them. But the Lightning basically don't have many options right now. They need somebody. They absolutely need a goalie. Um, a Tim Thomas would be another option, in my opinion. Um, um, he, he could be good for a team like the Tampa Bay Lightning. They definitely have their options as far as goaltending goes. Or maybe a team, I don't know, maybe a team like uh, the Calgary Flames. They could use one of those two as well. You know, if, if you know, they look content on trusting Kari Ramo to be their starter, but you got to wonder if that is even a really good idea. You know, there's a couple teams now that don't have a true starting goaltender, and the Calgary Flames and the Tampa Bay Lightnings are, Lightning are among those teams. <clears throat> we talked about Simon Gagne already. Um, he pretty much could go anywhere. Um, then you got a guy like Mason Raymond, you know. It does it basically pretty much looks confirmed that he will not be returning to the Vancouver Canucks. It looks like it looked at like at one point he was going to sign with the Calgary Flames, but that did not happen. And honestly, I like Mason Raymond. I think he has a lot of skill, um, good puck mover, has great soft hands, um, and I think a team that really needs to build up their offense. 
could use a guy like Mason Raymond, maybe a team like the Nashville Predators, who are in desperate need of offense, considering they were one of the worst offensive teams in the NHL last year. They could use a guy like Mason Raymond, or even better, they could maybe use a guy like Damian Brunner, um, because again, it's not confirmed that he's going to go to the New Jersey Devils. Uh, Washington Capitals also interested in Damian Brunner. So their offensive options are open, but probably to me, the biggest guy that's still available on the unrestricted free agent list right now, no question, has to be Brad Boyce. Brad Boyce had an excellent season for the New York Islanders last year, a comeback season, if you will. He didn't score a lot of goals, only 10 goals last year, but he played on the top line with John Tavares and Matt Molson, and he had 25 assists for 35 points in 48 games. He looks like he's on the road to being able to, ha to get his career back in shape. He hasn't been that star scorer since his days as a member of the St. Louis Blues. Um, I don't think he would go back there. In fact, the Blues, I think, will be content with what they have, and their main concentration right now will be to get Alex Petrangelo signed. They're done going after other guys, as far as I'm concerned. But again, I look at a team like the Nashville Predators. They absolutely need offense. They really do. And Brad Boyce could be the guy for them, in my opinion, above anyone else. Above Benny Prospel, above Damian Brunner, above Milan Hayduk, you know, above Mason Raymond. I, I think the Nashville Predators would be a great location for a guy like Brad Boyce. Um, he could basically be their replacement for Sergei Kostitsin, who they opted not to bring back. Um, so, um, could be definitely benefit playing on a line with a guy like Colin Wilson or Matt Cullen or even David Leguan. He could play with one of those guys and he'll thrive. I think he'll, he definitely thrive for a team like the Nashville Predators who again are in desperate need of offense. So Brad Boys is really the big guy right now. I think, um, <laughs> Brendan Morrow, uh, probably the second biggest name, but it is, of course, still the rumors going around of him gonna, going to attend the Carolina Hurricanes training camp. We've also had a few players this offseason who have signed in the KHL. Matthew Lombardi, who played, who split the season between the Phoenix Coyotes and the Anaheim Ducks last year. Another Anaheim Ducks prospect, Luca Caputi, he went there. Steve Eminger, who, play, who played the past few years for the New York Rangers, he went to the KHL as well. They're still trying to. They are trying to get Ilya Brzgalov to go there. Um, we'll see what happens there. And of course, there have been rumored to be talking with Alex Ovechkin as well. They're trying to get him out of Washington. I honestly don't like that at all. I don't like players trying to be convinced to go to another league just because they don't think the other league is good enough. I understand the Russian currency is much better than the U.S. currency, but. I think, honestly, the NHL is where Alex Ovechkin belongs, and the Washington Capitals is where he belongs as well. Um, I think that will be his, his choice for a long time. I'm hoping that's his choice for a long time, because without him, the Caps are, are, are busted, pretty much. So, so, yeah, a lot of big names out there. Um, and hopefully these guys will get signed by training camp as well as some of the restricted free agents as well. Alex Petrangelo, Derek Stepan, Marcus Johansson, Cody Hodgson. Those guys, Coach Eric Cowan, another one. I think those guys, they really got to get them signed. And for the Toronto Maple Leafs, they're in the toughest situation right now with both Nazem Kadri and Cody Franson. They may have to start the season without one or both of them. So a bad situation for them to be in. And they need Nazem Kadri more than Cody Franson. Cody Franson's a good defenseman, but um, Nazem Kadri's pretty much their second-line center who could battle for the role of being their top-line center. He could beat out Tyler Bozak, and if he signs, I think he will beat out Tyler Bozak. So they need him in order to ensure their run to the playoffs for the second straight year. So hopefully they get that situation straightened out. Okay, guys, that'll do it for episode 35 of Hockey on the Spot. Join me again tomorrow when we talk about some of the prospect tournaments that are going to be going on around the league. So until then, this has been Hockey on the Spot with Brandon Barenfeld. I'm Brandon Barenfeld. See you all again tomorrow. Have a great day.